All right, chapter eight, section four, De Moivre's theorem, powers and roots of complex numbers. Let's start with a complex number written in polar form and consider raising it to some powers. All right, we have a complex number written in polar form. Let's consider squaring it. Squaring it would be multiplying it by itself. And we discussed in an earlier lesson that you would multiply the absolute values and then you would add the arguments, like so, which would give you r squared times cosine of 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta. All right? So basically, when you raise a complex number that's written in polar form to the power of 2, all you have to do is square the absolute value and then double the argument. That seems pretty simple. Let's take a complex number now and raise it to the power of 3. And notice the pattern. If you raise it to the power of 3, that would mean r cosine theta plus i sine theta times r cos theta plus i sine theta times r cos theta plus i sine theta, right? So three times. So something like this. Now, again, from e earlier examples, or uh, rather an earlier lesson, we know we would multiply the absolute values, so r times r times r, and then you would add the argument. So it would be theta plus theta plus theta, of course, plus i times sine of theta plus theta plus theta, right? So you would basically get r cubed, times cosine of 3 theta plus i times sine of 3 theta. So basically, when you raise a complex number that's written in a polar form to the power of 3, when you cube it, it basically boils down to cubing the absolute value, r, and then tripling the argument. So I hope at this point you're seeing um, de Moivre's theorem play out on how to raise a complex number to a power. So de Moivre's theorem says if you have a complex number written in polar form and you're raising it to the power of n, then basically that is r to the power of n and then times cosine of n times theta plus i sine of n theta. Okay? So um, if you want shorthand notation, I can give that to you now. Shorthand notation for this theorem would be r cis theta raised to the power of n is equal to r to the nth power and then cis of n theta. This is de Moivre's theorem. Man, this is going to cut down our work tremendously. I'm so excited. All right, check this out. Example one, find the value of this expression and write the answer in rectangular form. Now, you guys, if I wrote this out traditionally, right, if I would have written it out as uh, if I just evaluate it like this, then it'd be root 2 plus i root 2 times root 2 times i root 2 times root 2 ti plus i root 2, I can't even say it, times root 2 plus i root 2 times root 2 plus i root 2, so five times, right? And then foil the mess out of it. And it would just take me so long. This would be so much easier if this complex number was written in polar form and then write, raising it to the fifth power using de Moivre's theorem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to polar form and then raise it to the fifth power. Okay, from earlier lessons, we learned already how to convert this to polar form. Remember, you need r and you need theta. So it would convert to 2 times cis 45 degrees. Now what I want to do is raise this to the fifth power, correct? Now, uh, de Moivre's theorem says all you have to do is raise... 2 to the 5th power, and then cis of 5 times 45 degrees. All right, so then this is 32 cis of 5 times 45 degrees would be uh, 225 degrees. So then this is 32. Um, oh, wait, hold on. I don't want us to lose this, the beauty of this. If we stop right here, we found this complex number raised to the fifth power. We did it. Look how easy that was. 
Now we just want to write our final answer in rectangular form. Cosine of 225 degrees is negative root 2 over 2 um, and negative root 2 over 2 for sine of 225 degrees. So look at this, you guys. We're practically done. Our final answer is negative 16 root 2 uh, minus 16i root 2. You guys, you guys, I'm done. We're done. This complex number has been written or been raised to the power of 5. Look at how easy that was. This would have been so much more difficult um, had we really just raised um, this to the power of 5 right here written it out five times and then just distributed like crazy, I'd be there forever. But raising it to the fifth power was a piece of cake when you do it in polar form. All right, now let's move to finding roots of complex numbers. First of all, every this is really important. Every complex number, every non-zero complex number, has exactly n distinct complex nth roots. Meaning, um, if you're looking for the square roots, of a complex number, there's two of them. If you're looking for the cube roots of a complex number, there's three of them. If you're looking for the fourth roots of a complex number, there's four of them. If you're looking for the fifth roots of complex of a complex number, there's five of them, and so forth. And de Moivre's theorem can be extended to find all of these nth roots of a complex number. Now, when we talk about nth roots, um, for a positive integer n, the complex number a plus bi is considered or called an nth root of the complex number x plus yi if the following holds. Okay, now watch this. a plus bi is an nth root of x plus yi if I raise a plus bi to the nth power and I get x plus yi. Okay, now let me see if I can draw the analogy here for us, okay? Um, 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 okay, look at this. How do you know 5 is a square root of 25? How would you prove that? Well, 5 is a square root of 25 because when you square it, you get 25, right? How do you know 2 is a cube root of 8? Well, I know 2 is a cube root of 8 because when I cube 2, I get 8. So that's what we're saying here. We know, we know a plus bi is an nth root of x plus yi because when I raise it to the nth power, I get x plus yi. So to, to, to figure out um, how we're going to find the nth roots of our complex numbers, let's look at an example. Okay, I want us to find all cube roots of this complex number. Now, because you're looking for cube roots, you know there's three of them. So I'm saying find all three cube roots of 8 cis 135 degrees. So to find the three complex numbers, um, or the three complex roots um, of 8 cis 135 degrees, is to find a complex number of this form such that when you raise it to the third power, you get 8 cis 135 degrees. Now follow me here. Um, what we can do um, by de Moivre's theorem is to say this left-hand side is r cubed, and then this is cosine 3 alpha, isn't it? Plus i sine of 3 alpha. That's the uh, left-hand side by de Moivre's theorem. And that's set equal to this right-hand side. So what we can do in order for this equation to be satisfied, the first thing we can do is set r cubed equal to 8. Okay? Which you'll un, uh, agree that um, that makes r equal to 2. So what we just found right here, you guys, is the absolute value or the modulus of my cube roots is 2. Right? So this is the cube root that I'm looking for. There's three of them, by the way. And each of those three cube roots will have modulus or absolute value, too. Now, the other thing we want to equate is cosine 3 alpha plus I sine 3 alpha must be equal to cosine 135 degrees plus I sine of 135 degrees in order for this equation to be equivalent. 
So we have cosine 3 alpha plus I sine 3 alpha is equal to cosine 135 degrees plus I sine of 135 degrees. Now furthermore, we can take this even further and say, well, this is only true if cosine of 3 alpha is equal to cosine of 135 degrees, right? Um, that's the same thing as saying I sine of 3 alpha must be equal to I sine of 135 degrees. So what we're saying is in order for this equality to be true, cosine of 3 alpha must be equal to cosine of 135 degrees, and I sine of 3 alpha must be equal to I sine of 135 degrees. Now we can take this even further and say that each of these statements here will be satisfied only if 3 alpha is equal to 135 degrees, right? Which means, um, and by the way, um, this will be true for if 3 alpha is 135 degrees plus any um, angle that is coterminal with 135 degrees. So 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer, okay? This adding of 360 degrees will get all of the, will generate all of the angles that are coterminal with 135 degrees. In order to solve for alpha, which happens to be the argument of my three complex roots, I'll divide both sides by three. So if I divide this side by three and this whole side by three, right, I'll get that, and then this is really important, that alpha is equal to 135 degrees plus 360 degrees K, all of that divided by three. This, you guys, expression generates the arguments for the three cube roots that I'm looking for, okay? Now watch this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this expression and we're gonna let k run through some values so that we can generate our alphas, okay? So the first thing I would like you to consider is let k be zero. What do you get? Alpha will be equal to, well, if k is zero, 360 degrees times zero is just zero, so that's gone. So you're just left with 135 degrees divided by uh, three, which is equal to uh, let's see, this will be equal to 45 degrees, okay? So there's one argument for your cube roots. Now, let's let k be one. If you let k be one, then this alpha would be 135 degrees plus, now remember k is one, 360 degrees times one is just 360 degrees. Don't forget, all of this is divided by 3. If you do the arithmetic, you'll find that this is equal to 165 degrees. So there's the another argument for your cube roots. Now, let k be 2. When k is 2, alpha is 135 degrees plus... Now, if k is 2, 360 degrees times 2 is 720. So let me plug that in here. Don't forget everything divided by three. Now, if you do the arithmetic, you'll see that this is equal to 285 degrees, okay? Now, this is the interesting part. If you let K be three, if you go any larger than two, if you let K be three, you're gonna start getting repeats. You're gonna start getting um, repeating solutions. All right, so we're gonna actually stop here. Notice where we're stopping. We're stopping at k equal to two, okay? Now, let's write down our final answer. You and I, we're looking for the three cube roots of eight cis 135 degrees. So here are uh, the three cube roots, ready? Um, all of their absolute values will be two. Do you remember that, r was two? So the first one will be 2, cis, and then the first argument is 45 degrees. There's one cube root. Uh, the next one is 2, cis, 165 degrees. And the last one is 2, cis, 285 degrees. This, or these, are the three cube roots for 8 cis 
135 degrees. Okay, now we want to summarize everything we did here. So notice that we were finding what? Three, the three cube roots, and you let k go from 0, 1, 2. All right, 2 happens to be one uh, integer value less than 3. Notice that you were looking for the three cube roots and you kept on dividing your arguments by three. All right, so let me see if we can summarize this process um, like the following. All right, here's the nth root theorem. If n is any positive integer, r is a positive real number, and theta is in degrees, then the non-zero complex number r cosine theta plus i sine theta has exactly n distinct nth roots given by the following. The nth root of r cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Now I'm going to explain to you what alpha is in just a second, but first I want you to notice that the absolute value or the modulus of your nth roots is equal to the nth root of r. In other words, um, see here, this r value here, this absolute value or modulus, if you're looking for the square roots, then you're just going to take the square root of r. If you're looking for the cube roots, you're going to take the cube roots of that value r. If you're looking for the fourth roots, then you're going to take the fourth root of that uh, modulus r and so forth. So this right here gives you the absolute value or the modulus of your nth roots. Now, for alpha, as far as alpha is concerned, alpha is equal to the following. Alpha is equal to theta plus 360 degrees times k over n. Now, let's break this down. Um, theta is that theta here, the original theta that they are going to give you, all right? Plus any angle that is coterminal with that, right? That's 360 degrees, but all of this is divided by n, right? So if you're looking for cube roots, then your n is three, you're dividing by three. If you're looking for fourth roots, then you're dividing by four because n is four. Now this is really important. You're gonna let k start from zero, one, two, three, and go all the way to n minus one. Now, all of this seems like a lot. Let's see if we can walk through the nth root theorem together. We actually just finished doing that when we were finding the three cube roots for eight cis 135 degrees. But let's do it again here um, now that we have the nth root theorem officially written down in our notes. All right, everybody. Find the three cube roots of negative eight. Write the roots in rectangular form. You know, if this were an algebra class, you and I would say, all right, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, right? Because negative 2 cubed is negative 8. But we just learned that there are actually three cube roots of negative 8. There are three numbers such that when you raise them to the third power, you get negative 8. In algebra, we really only talk about the one and only cube root, right? But there's really two other, uh, others that we're about to find now. So here we go, let us find the three cube roots of negative eight. Uh, the first thing I would recommend us to do is to write negative eight in, in trig form or polar form. All right, so negative eight, we must understand, is the same thing as negative eight plus zero i, all right? In order to write this in polar form or trig form, we have to find r and we have to find theta. All right, so r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, right? We did this in an earlier lesson. Let me make that nicer for us. We did this in an earlier lesson. So r is equal to, in this example, negative uh, 8 squared plus 0 squared. This just gives us 8. Now, theta must satisfy tangent theta is equal to y over x, which in this case is 0 over negative 8, which is 0. Now, looking at our number, negative 8, we know this uh, number, negative 8, determines a position vector that lies on the negative part of the x-axis, so our theta 
must be 180 degrees. All right, everybody. Negative 8 in polar form is 8 cis 180 degrees. So you and I are finding the three cube roots for this complex number. All right, so we're going to have to find what the modulus or the absolute value of our uh, cube roots is. And according to the nth root theorem, our uh, modulus or the absolute value of our um, uh, three cube roots will be the cube root of 8, which is 2. So r will be equal to 2, all right? So let's keep put that aside. Now, that, that was pretty simple, wasn't it? The reason why I took a cube root of 8, everybody, is because I'm finding cube roots. If I was finding fourth roots, then this would be the fourth root of 8. Or if I was finding fifth roots, then this would have been the fifth root of 8, okay? So I know the absolute value or the modulus of my cube roots is 2. Now let's find alpha. Alpha represents the arguments of your cube roots. Now it is going to be 180 degrees. That's your theta that was given, right? 180 degrees plus 360 degrees times k all divided by 3. Why divided by 3? Because we're finding cube roots. Once again, if you are finding fourth roots, then you would be dividing by 4, for example. All right. Now what we're going to do, um, actually before we plug in k values, let's simplify this expression a little bit. I'm going to divide 3 into 180 and divide 3 into 360. That's going to make my calculations easier. So, so alpha, all of my alphas will be 60 degrees plus uh, 120 degrees times k. All right? So this is the expression now, simplified, that will generate my arguments. All right, here we go. We're going to start letting k run through some values. So let's start with 0. When you let k be 0, your first alpha will be 60 degrees, right? Because 0 times 120 degrees is 0, so you're just left with 60 degrees. Now let's let k be 1. When k is 1, then alpha is 60 degrees plus um, 120 degrees, which is 180 degrees. Very good. And then let us let k be 2. When k is 2, then alpha is 60 degrees plus, now, 120 degrees times 2 is 240. So this is 240 degrees, which is 300 degrees. Now, we're going to stop right here as far as your k values. Remember, you only let k run through uh, a 0 all the way through n minus 1. In this case, 3 minus 1, which is 2. If you keep on going, if you let k be 3 or let k be 4 and so forth, you're just going to get repeating solutions. All right, everybody, we're done. Let's just write down our final answers. So our three cube roots are the following. 2 is the absolute value, which we found right here, times cis of 60 degrees. 2 times cis of 180 degrees. Move this up a little bit. Uh, 2 times cis of 300 degrees. These are the three cube roots for um, negative 8. Now, they wanted our answers in our roots in rectangular form, so let's keep going. So then this would be 2 times. Now, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So 1 half plus sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the next one, 2 times. Now, cosine of 180 degrees is um, negative 1. And then sine of 180 degrees is 0. 
Okay, very good. We'll, we'll simplify these a little more. And then the last one, cosine of 300 degrees is 1 half. And sine of 300 degrees is negative root 3 over 2. All right, cool. So then moving this up and simplifying, and this will be our final answer. Our three cube roots are, um, I'm distributing the two into each one of these. Okay, everybody? So this, these are my final answers. Uh, one plus i root three, there's one cube root, uh, negative two, and then one minus i root three. These are the three cube roots for negative eight. That is to say that if you were to cube these numbers, you'll get negative eight. Now, I, I don't think I have to convince you uh, that negative two cubed is negative eight. I think we've known that already. But now, if you cube this number, this complex number, if you cube it, you're gonna get negative eight. Isn't that amazing? If you cube one minus i root three, you will get negative eight. If you don't believe me, I, I, I um, invite you to do that. Um, raise it to the third power and you're gonna get negative eight. All right, let's do this again. Check this out, guys. Example three, find all fourth roots of negative 128 minus 128 i root three. Now, if you're finding fourth roots of this complex number, how many are there? Well, because you're finding fourth roots, you know there's going to be four of them, all right? So first things first, I suggest we write this number in polar form. Now, in order to write this in polar form, which don't forget is also called trigonometric form, we need r and we need theta. So let's find r. r is the square root of negative 128 squared plus um, negative 128 root 3 squared. All right? So r is equal to the square root of uh, 65,536, okay? Um, and then the square root of that, which is 256, all right? Very good. Now, um, tangent of theta must satisfy y over x, which is negative 128 root 3 over negative 128, which is just positive root 3. All right. Now, um, now be careful, guys. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Um, now, which quadrant is theta in? If you look at your complex number, both the x and the y values, both x and y are negative. That puts you in quadrant three. So because you're in quadrant three, um, you know your reference angle is 60 degrees, right? But in quadrant three, that would put you at 60 degrees after 180 degrees. So that would put you at 240 degrees, all right? So if I can move up here, the number that they gave us, negative 128 um, minus 128 i root 3 is the same thing as, let me write this down for us. This is the same thing as 256 cis 240 degrees. So what I'm saying is to find the four fourth roots of this complex number is to find the four fourth roots of this complex number because they're equal, all right? So here we go. Let's find all four of them. Now, what you want to do is find the absolute value or the modulus of your fourth roots. Now, because you're finding fourth roots, you're going to say that r is equal to the fourth root of 256, okay? And which is, 
uh, four. All right, so it's very important that you and I understand here. Let me box this for us. This here, guys, is the absolute value, also called the modulus, of our fourth root. So that's going to be in our final answer. Okay, now it's time to find our alphas. Okay, our alpha will be, our alphas will be 240 degrees. Okay, that's what the nth root theorem calls theta, plus 360 degrees times k, all of this divided by what? Well, because we're finding fourth roots, we'll divide by 4, okay? Now simplify this expression. 4 goes into 240 degrees 60 times, and 4 goes into 360 degrees 90 times. Okay, so this expression here generates the argument of all of my fourth roots. And I'm going to let k run through some values. I'm going to let k be 0. I'm going to let k be 1. I'm going to let k be 2. I'm going to let k be 3. I'm going to stop right there because I always stop since, we're, since n is 4. I'm finding fourth roots, n is 4, I want to stop at n minus 1, 4 minus 1, which is 3, okay? Don't go any further, because then you'll start repeating um, solutions. So when uh, k is 0, alpha is simply 60 degrees. When k is 1, alpha is 60 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is 150 degrees. When k is 2, alpha is 60 degrees plus 180 degrees, because 90 degrees times 2 is 180 degrees, which will give us um, 240 degrees. Finally, when, alpha, when k is 3, alpha is 60 degrees plus 270 degrees. I got 270 degrees because I let k be 3. 90 degrees times 3 is 270 degrees. And this gives us 330 degrees degrees. Okay? We're ready to write down all of our fourth roots. Are you ready? Now don't forget, I'm going to scroll back up. Don't forget the modulus or the absolute value of our fourth roots is 4 and each of these alphas are our um, arguments. So you got 60 degrees, 150, 240, and 330. All right, so let's do it. Let's write down our answers. So, 4, cis, 60 degrees. Next, 4, cis, 150 degrees. Next, 4, cis, 330 degrees. Need to scroll down a little further here. Next one, 4, cis. Uh, did I miss one? I missed one. I see it. Do you guys see that this should have been... Um, 240. There we go. And now this one is 330 degrees. Now, you guys, if they just said find the fourth roots, then we're done. Okay. But they said to also write the roots in rectangular form. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So here we go. This one says four. Now, cosine of 60 degrees is one half. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. This one here, cosine of 150 degrees is negative root 3 over 2. Um, and sine of 150 degrees is 1 half. Don't forget that I. Um, cosine of 240 degrees is negative 1 half. This is where your knowledge of the unit circle, especially quadrant one, comes into play really nicely. Sine of 240 degrees is negative uh, root 3 over 2. I. Finally, cosine of 330 degrees is uh, root positive root 3 over 2. And sine of 330 degrees is negative 1 half. There. 
So what I want to do now is just distribute all these fours, and when I do so, I'll have my final answers. 2 plus 2i root 3. Negative 2 root 3 plus 2i. Negative 2 minus 2i root 3. Finally, 2 root 3 minus 2i. These are the four fourth roots of that complex number they gave us in the beginning. What was it? Negative 128 minus 128i root 3. These are the four fourth roots of that number. Meaning, if you were to raise this number, or this one, or this one, or this one, to the fourth power, you will get that original complex number they gave us. Cool deal. All right, you guys, last example. Find all solutions, all complex number solutions, of x to the sixth power plus i is equal to zero. Now, when they say solve for x, it really is what you're solving for, that means you want to isolate x, isn't it? Doesn't, isn't that what we do? So what you want to do first, maybe, is to subtract i from both sides. And then if you want to solve for x, you're going to want to take the sixth root of both sides, right? Hey, when you subtract i from both sides, you get negative i, correct? So then you get x is equal to the sixth root of negative i negative i. Okay? So now, if you and I are successful at finding the sixth roots of negative i, then you and I will have our solutions. Now, let us convert this complex number, which is in standard form or also called rectangular form, let's convert it to polar form. What I would, what I would uh, invite you to do is to pause the video um, be, and give that a shot. Convert negative i to polar form. We did that in the previous lesson. We've done it a few times in this lesson, so give that a shot. All right, I'm assuming that you've given that a shot and you have found that negative i, all right, well, let me show you my thought process. r is equal to, remember, Negative i is the same thing as 0 minus i. 0 minus i. So it's the square root of 0 squared plus negative 1 squared. Hey guys, this is just the square root of x squared plus y squared. Do not put i under here. Okay, It's just the coefficients, x and y. So you can see r is equal to um, 1 when you simplify that. Now watch this. Tangent of theta must satisfy y over x. y is negative 1, the coefficient of i. And uh, the real part is 0, right? Because this is the same thing as 0 minus i. This is undefined, right? Undefined. Tangents undefined whenever you have an angle theta that, li that is quadrantal on your y-axis. Now, so theta must be either 90 degrees or 270 degrees. It must be 270 degrees because this is negative i, not positive i. Okay, so your y value is negative. Remember, this is 0 minus 1i. So your y value is negative, which puts you on the negative portion of the y axis. So what we know is that theta must be 270 degrees. So when they say find the sixth roots of negative i, that's the same thing as saying find the sixth roots of 1 times cis of 270 degrees. Very good, you guys. All right, so let's go for it. Let us find um, all, um, all the roots, all the solutions. How many solutions will we have? Well... Because we're finding sixth roots, you will have six answers, right? So let's do it. So the first thing you want to do is find the modulus or the absolute value of your sixth roots. 
it will be equal to the sixth root of r here, right? Which is one. So which is just one, okay? So one is the absolute value or the modulus of your sixth roots. Now, what about your alphas? Your alphas will be equal to 270 degrees plus 360 degrees times k, all divided by, in this case, what are we dividing by? You're right, six, because we're finding sixth roots, right? All right, if you simplify this before you start letting k run through some values, you'll find that six goes into 270 degrees. Uh, how many times is that? I believe that's 45 degrees there, plus uh, 60 degrees, right, times k. All right, so this expression here, hey, don't, um, I'm gonna move the screen up, but don't lose the fact that r is one, okay? One is the absolute value or the modulus of our sixth roots. This expression right here, everybody, will generate all of your alphas. What are you gonna let k equal? You're gonna let k equal zero, and then you're gonna let k equal one, right? And then you'll let k equal two. You have to keep going until you go to n minus one. Remember that in the nth root theorem? In this case, n is six because you're finding sixth roots. So you have to go all the way to five. So let k be three, let k be four, let k be five. Don't go any further because if you do, you're gonna start repeating solutions. All right, let's do it. When k is zero, now keep in mind we're plugging in these k values right here, okay? So when k is zero, alpha is 45 degrees. When k is one, alpha is 45 degrees plus 60 degrees, which just means it is 105 degrees, okay? When k is two, alpha is 45 degrees plus 120 degrees. I want to be clear, I got 120 degrees because I let k be 2. 60 degrees times 2 is 120 degrees. So then alpha is 165 degrees. Keep going. When k is 3, alpha is 45 degrees plus 180 degrees, which is 200, uh, what is this, 25 degrees. When k is four, alpha is 45 degrees plus uh, 240 degrees, which means alpha is 285 degrees. Finally, when k is five, alpha is 45 degrees plus uh, 300 degrees, which means alpha is 345 degrees. You found all of the arguments of your six sixth roots. There's one argument, another, 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 and another. Do you remember what the modulus or the absolute value of your six sixth roots are? One, right? So then your final answers can be written like the following. One times cis 45 degrees, one times cis 105 degrees, one times cis 165 degrees, one times cis 285 degrees, one times cis of um, two, I missed one again, just like I did in the previous example, 225 degrees and cis of 345 degrees. You guys, this is, or these are, the six sixth roots of, um, of negative i. Mainly, these are the um, six, uh, these are the six solutions for that equation that they gave us. x to the sixth power plus i is equal to zero. Isn't that great? Now, don't worry about trans, um, Lading this or, or converting rather these polar form uh, complex numbers 
to rectangular form. They didn't ask us to do that in this example. So if they do not say write the roots in rectangular form, don't feel obligated to do so. So I'm leaving these in polar form because they never asked me to convert them to uh, rectangular form. Okay, this is the end of this section. I hope um, it made sense. It, you know, as always, uh, feel free to rewind and listen to it again and again and make sure you are clear on the nth root theorem, finding nth roots of complex numbers, and also solving um, uh, these equations. All right, catch you later.